Let us rise. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for this morning is written in the sixth chapter of St. John, beginning at the 47th verse, and reads as follows in Jesus' name. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is your word, Heavenly Father. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear people who trust in the bread of life, the news recently is reporting that many children and families in the area of Gaza are starving. Supplies have been cut off and they have no food in order to survive in this world. Our country has been airlifting supplies over to the area, but there are hard, those supplies are hardly enough to feed all of those people. Yet the world is also starving in a different way. God said through the prophet Amos, he describes a terrible famine. I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. What a terrible famine that would be. For without God's word, there can be no faith in Jesus. And without faith in Jesus, there is no life in heaven, no eternal life. The problem is that many people are looking for food that satisfies their bodies but not for the food that satisfies their souls. The people in our text were seeking such food, earthly food, but they didn't realize that they were dealing with Jesus, who is the bread of life. Let that be our theme for today. Jesus is our bread of life. And we consider, based on that theme, let us consider the bread that leads to eternal death the bread that gives life to all people and the bread that assures us of eternal life. <clears throat> As we heard in our gospel lesson, the day before our text, Jesus had just fed 5,000 men plus women and children with just a few fish, two fish and five loaves of bread. The disciples had gathered up 12 baskets of the food that was left over after everybody had been satisfied and filled. Instead of glorifying Jesus as God coming among them, we heard in our gospel that the people wanted to make Jesus a king so that they could continue to feed him, feed themselves with all of this bread into the future. Jesus sent the disciples off to a mountain, uh, off into uh, the boats and they were to roll back to Capernaum. Jesus went up to a mountain to pray. That night, a storm arose, windstorm arose, and Jesus walked on the water to save the disciples from the windstorm and then brought them to Capernaum. That next day is our text where some of the people who had been fed had come to Capernaum and asked Jesus, where, where, how did you get here? And that's when Jesus said, do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, 
because the God, Father has set his seal on him. The miracle that should have given the people evidence of the glorious truth that here God was among them and here was the Messiah. They turned into wanting something for their earthly lives, their earthly bodies. The Father, Heavenly Father has set his seal of approval on Jesus. And through the miracles, they were to conclude, here is the Son of God, the Son of Man, come among them. Even the Pharisee Nicodemus understood by these miracles what was going on. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. However, these people focused on the food that perishes and ignored the food that brings everlasting life. They demanded even greater miracles than the ones that God had done for the Israelites in the wilderness. Jesus, in our text, showed the difference between the two foods when he said, Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. Even though the children of Israel had been fed for 40 years, on the manna that came down every morning except for the Sabbath day. They should, when they were gathering that manna, they should have been glorifying God that he was feeding them and that they didn't have to go out and gather all of this uh, food for all, these two million people. Here was a sign of God's love for them. Yet the manna could not give them eternal life. The Bible says, now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? The manna did not leave the people to believe and trust in God's promises. And so they spent 40 years in the wilderness in death. If earthly things are more important than spiritual things, then we have a problem as well because our souls aren't being fed and we will not receive eternal life. There's only one food that can give us what we need for our souls and for life. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And so the one bread leads to death but the bread that Jesus gives us leads to life. Jesus offered the water that springs up to eternal life to a Samaritan woman at a well. This woman believed what Jesus said and went back and told her fellow villagers, he has told me everything that I have done. Is not this the Messiah? But there was another young man who was very rich. And he asked Jesus, what must I do to enter eternal life? And Jesus told him, go and sell everything that you have. And you will have treasures in heaven. One more thing. Follow me and you will have treasures in heaven. The man walked away sad because he had great riches and he was not willing to give them up. And so he missed out on the bread of life because he was looking for the things of this world. All, with all his wealth, he could not buy a ticket into heaven. He could not pay for his sins. And therefore, he was lost. Jesus told the crowd, I am the bread of life which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. With this striking figure of speech, Jesus is telling the crowd what they truly need in order to survive in this world and into the next. Here is the wonderful miracle that people ask for. God's Son had come unto the earth. The Messiah had been born. God's Son took on human flesh and lived among them. As true God, He is able to give life to everyone who believes on Him. For He said, As the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. God the Father sent Jesus into the world on a life-saving mission. Jesus and the Father are one in majesty, in glory, in power, and in honor. When Jesus became one of us, 
so that by his loving sacrifice on his cross, he might give us life and earn it for us. For, you see, our sins bring us to eternal death. But Jesus paid the price of our sins and therefore gives us eternal life. Jesus is therefore like bread. Ordinary bread can sustain our life for a long time. Jesus sustains our life here on earth as well by giving us the food for our souls so that we no longer are anxious and worried about what's going to happen to us in the future. Jesus sustains us. But he is the bread of life that gives us life as well. Jesus tells us what kind of bread he is giving us. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Here Jesus is talking about the cross. He came to give, to do his Father's will. To suffer and die in our place. To take upon himself our sins and our punishment. So that he could uh, remove the punishment from us. Because he put it on himself. Jesus gave us his life because he has abolished death by his taking on our punishment. Now, a doctor doesn't save patients by dying. A farmer doesn't plant anything by dying. A soldier might die for a fellow soldier. But Jesus died for you and I. And in that death, he gives us life. And that's why we can trust in, in him and trust that he will give us eternal life. The word save means to rescue, to deliver. And Jesus saved us so that he could deliver us to eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave up his life in order that all those who believe on him may have eternal life. Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word ransom means somebody who makes a payment to set somebody free from captivity or prison or slavery. Jesus didn't come to serve himself, but to serve you and I. St. Paul tells us the result of that sacrifice. You who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in God's sight. Jesus won this salvation for all people in the world. And because he did that for all people, we can know that he did it for us. The Bible says Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So how does that salvation become ours? Jesus declared in our text, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my blood, for my flesh is food indeed, deed, and my blood is drink indeed. As we heard in our text, the people could not understand. How can we eat Jesus' body and blood? But Jesus had already given them a clue to what he means by these words. When he said, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. <coughs> And this is the clue to the whole discussion in chapter 6 of John. Whoever eats Christ's blood and drink uh, his body and drink his blood is one who believes on Jesus. And through faith in Jesus, God gives us eternal life. St. Paul says this also. To him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, dear friends, it isn't that we made ourselves faith in Jesus and that we did something in order to have faith. Then faith would be a work that we would do and we'd be working our way into heaven. Faith is a gift from God given to us in baptism and through the word. And that faith is in Jesus and what he has done to save us by his death on the cross. And everyone who believes on Jesus, God promises that they have eternal life. And not only that, that they will be raised up at the last day. 
It is important for us to understand that Jesus is using a figure of speech here. Jesus is not a loaf of bread. He is like bread. He gives us life. And that's what we need to understand through this text. Jesus is not talking about the Lord's Supper here either. That was instituted months later. But like the Lord's Supper, we are to believe and trust in Him. And when we receive His body and blood, we also receive forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And that's the blessing that we have, the assurance that we have, that our sins are truly forgiven. In our text, everyone who eats Christ's flesh and drinks His blood receives forgiveness because salvation is ours and we are assured of eternal life. In speaking to these people, Jesus was trying to help them to see what was most important. He wanted them to have eternal life. <clears throat> Listen to his promises. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. And if anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Finally, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus here could not be more clear and more truthful about his promise. Do we trust in that promise? Is Jesus the most important part of our life? Is he more important than even food and drink and anything else that we have in this world? Consider what happens at the end of chapter 6. The people said, this is a hard saying. Who can believe it? Who can understand it? And John adds, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. How sad that many people turned away from Jesus and lost the eternal life that he was talking about and promising to them. By God's grace, he has brought us to faith to believe on Jesus as our greatest treasure. St. Paul says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And because there is no condemnation, there is eternal life with him. Don't be like the Israelites who rebelled against God and died in the wilderness. Don't be like these people in our text who turned away from Jesus, the bread of life, because they couldn't understand it. Trust in Jesus, believe on him as the most important person in our life. He is the food for our souls. He will give us life and take us to heaven. May God grant this to us all. Amen. Let us rise to the blessing. The peace of God was passive, understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.